Hello, I'm Jim Del Prince, professor of horticulture at Mississippi State University. Welcome to Gardening Through the Seasons. You know, indoor gardening is fun no matter what the time of the year. In today's segment, we're going to build a miniature garden, a terrarium. The first thing that you'll need to do in order to put your terrarium together is to think about where it will be displayed in your home or office. A little bit away from an eastern exposure is one of the perfect places to keep a terrarium because the sunlight is soft and dappled. You can also place it in a western exposure or a southern exposure, but take care to keep the terrarium further away from the window or put it in a place that's protected by curtains. It is also possible to put it in a northern exposure, but you're want, going to want to keep that terrarium a little bit closer to the window because the light levels are low. Take care if you use any of those bright light exposures that you keep the terrarium away from the window because strong sunlight can literally cook the plants. The temperature inside the terrarium will get so hot that it will kill the plant materials. Now the first thing we're going to do is take a look at some of the supplies that are needed in order to put the terrarium together. One of the first things you'll need to find is some horticultural grade charcoal. This material is very fine in its consistency and you'll need that in order to create the base of the terrarium itself. On top of that layer we'll be using some fine quality gravel. This is available in aquarium supply departments and pet stores. You'll also need some potting soil. This potting soil is rich in organic material and is great for the tropical plants. You'll also notice too that I've contrived some different tools. Sometimes some people will select terrarium containers such as jugs or bottles and you need to be able to place the plant down inside and tamp down the soil. I've made just sort of this large looking swab with some uh, masking tape that's been added to the stake itself. Now that we know the tools and supplies that are necessary to make the terrarium, the next thing that we need to think about is the choice of container. You know, a container choice can be something as simple as a two liter plastic soda pop bottle. All you would need to do is cut off the dark plastic base and use that for the planter. After you add the plant to the container, simply replace the upper portion, the clear upper portion, and maintain it that way. That's a great container selection or a great container choice in working with children and horticulture. I have come up with a couple of containers that I want to tell you about. This first one was a flea market find. This vasiform apothecary jar was missing its container's top and also has a little chip down at the base. Nevertheless, this makes a great open type container because I could then add plants down into this form and it would lift them off the tabletop. Another container selection that I had is found in this old time candy jar and this is a great closed form container. Once I would add all of my materials into the container and add the plants and add water, all I would need to do is replace the container's lid, creating a closed form environment which literally rains upon itself. When you use this glass container, make sure that it is clean. You want to start off with a clean container right from the beginning because it's very difficult to clean it once the design is made. I'm going to remove the lid from the container and I'm going to add the first ingredient which is a layer of pebbles. This is going to aid in drainage for the terrarium. Add the gravel to the container to a depth of about one inch and then smooth the stones so you have a relatively even layer. Our next step is to add the horticultural charcoal. This is going to help to keep the soil nice and sweet. I'm going to take my bag and cut it so that it's a little bit easier to access and then I'm going to scoop some of the charcoal in place. You want to do this very slowly because the charcoal builds up a lot of dust and this is going to help to keep the interior of the container nice and clean. 
as water is added to the terrarium container, it will percolate through the charcoal layer into the gravel. So the charcoal layer is a really great way of creating a filter to keep the terrarium nice and sweet. Following this, we're finally ready for the third layer, which is the potting soil. Add this in a layer so that you're able to create the substrate for the plant materials to grow. Smooth it out as you go, and you want to add it to a depth of about two to three inches in a container such as this. This will beautifully accommodate the small plants that have been selected for the project. Isn't it interesting too to see the various layers of materials that are used for the plants? It adds a much more natural effect to the interior of the terrarium. My first plant selection for the terrarium is this little banana croton. But as you can see, even with small plants, they're a little too large for many of the large containers that we would be using for a terrarium. So what I need to do is I need to take this plant and break it down into size. I'm going to remove it from its grow pot, and then I'm going to find the small cuttings that are a part of the propagation of this plant. And here's a good little cutting here. You see how it's very nicely rooted? All I have to do is gently tug at those roots to remove it from the parent pot. This is going to be a mainstay for the center of the terrarium. So go ahead and place that down inside a little bit towards the center of the terrarium itself. And just kind of tuck that down and press down lightly but securely keeping that little croton in place and bringing the soil around it. My next step is to add this maidenhair fern. And as you can see, it's the same thing, a little too large for the container itself. So I can come through and remove some of these little renegade shoots and some of this newer growth, as well as a few pieces of the old growth enabled, in order to enable this plant to be just the right size for my terrarium. Remove that from its grow pot and lightly remove the edges of the soil, but keeping that root ball intact and then also removing some of the extra soil from around the base of this plant. This is going to be a nice little form that is a little bit more of a shrub, whereas the croton was more of an upright line material plant. And then just tuck that down right into the base of the terrarium and then smooth up a little bit of soil and press it in place. We'll add more soil to this as we work along. The third component is some of this creeping fig that I rooted from uh, another larger plant and its nice roots are already intact so all I have to do with this is just kind of snug it right down into the soil itself and allow it to creep around. So I have an upright plant, a shrub-like plant, and now I've got a little creeping ground cover that'll be just perfect to create this miniature landscape. Now that that plant is in place, I'm gonna add a little bit of this extra soil in around the plants themselves, just to make sure that they are stabilized and of course, when you plant them into the terrarium, make sure that they're planted at their original height. I'm just using this extra soil to fill in those little pockets so the soil column itself is relatively even. And then I'm gonna tamp all of that down into place. Now, I've noticed now that I have my plants in place that they're still a little too big. So what I'm going to do is trim off some of these longer leaves you know, I don't want them to come in contact with the sides of the container. And that can be kind of a problem because it will build up a little bit more uh, potential there for disease to set in. So if I make sure that none of the plant material is touching the side of the container, I won't have to worry about disease to set in. And there's a little bit of this maidenhair fern here too that's just touching the side, so I'll trim that as well. It's nice to give our terrarium a little bit of a top dressing, a little bit of extra finish. So I've procured some of this sheet moss from the florist and I take it 
and tear it down into small bits. Now these small pieces of moss are added to the surface of the plant material. And I need to make sure I give my little creeping fig plant enough room to grow uh, and don't cover it up completely. But it's all right if the moss and the fig plant kind of interact a little bit because in this miniature garden, we appreciate the uh, contrasts of texture and variations of green that are being used. Tuck this in and all of the different points around the container. The moss also helps to keep some of the moisture content within the soil. But more than anything, provides us with that feeling of this being a little tropical garden or a little temperate garden. Now at this stage of the game, I'm ready to add some water to the container. And I'm going to do that with my watering can, but I'm going to put my finger over the um, edge of the watering can itself so that I only add approximately a half a cup of water per plant. And you want to keep that watering even throughout the container. Don't have any big gushers out of it, but just add just a little bit of water into the terrarium itself so you have enough saturation. I'm adding mist to the side of the container now to rinse off some of the residue from the soil. And this little bit of this extra layer of water also helps to finally finish off all of the watering that's necessary for the terrarium. Now I'm ready to wrap up the project. I've got this great little pottery frog which will add a little bit of life to the interior of the container. And I'm going to take the lid and place it on top of my closed system terrarium. Now for the first 24 hours of display, you want the design to stay this way and again, out of direct sunlight. The next day, take the lid off of the container for a few minutes or up to an hour to make sure that all of the surface moisture has evaporated from the interior of the container. And you'll see the little water beads. You want those to be gone and then to replace the lid. We never want a buildup of moisture inside the container, but we just want that water vapor to be there to hold the design in place. I hope you enjoyed building this terrarium with me. I'm Jim Del Prince, professor of horticulture at Mississippi State University. Thanks for watching Gardening Through the Seasons.